Imagine a world where luxury knows no bounds, where dreams become reality and where fortunes are built upon ingenuity and hard work. Welcome to Superstructures. Today we invite you to step into their world and experience the exhilarating journey firsthand. Brace yourself for a captivating tale that will leave you in awe. Let's start by exploring the most prominent figure in Sweden's billionaire circle, Stefan Persson, the mastermind behind H&M. Stefan inherited the company from his father, Erling Persson, who established it back in 1947. With his immense success, Stefan has accumulated a staggering fortune of $25 billion. Naturally, he indulges in a lifestyle that exudes sophistication and elegance. For many Swedish billionaires, luxury isn't just about flashy cars and extravagant parties. They prioritize living well and maintaining their privacy in houses that radiate superiority. In the case of Stefan, he resides in Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. But his dwelling is far from an ordinary penthouse downtown. The 74-year-old billionaire dwells in a breathtaking mansion that distinctly represents Swedish architectural style. The house boasts sharp triangular points and captivating brickwork, a common feature in Swedish designs. Nestled within a vast property, one can imagine lush gardens, enchanting walking paths, and perhaps even fountains. After all, what purpose does extensive land serve without these beautiful additions? However, this reclusive billionaire keeps his doors tightly closed to the outside world. When we say these individuals value their privacy, we mean it. While the exact cost of Stefan's mansion remains undisclosed, judging from other lavish residences in Stockholm, it's safe to assume it ranges between $3 million and $10 million. In addition to his magnificent Stockholm mansion, Stefan Persson possesses an equally exquisite estate in another corner of Europe. Nestled in southwest England's Wiltshire, this manor embodies the quintessential English charm that resonates with Persson's refined taste. Its walls adorned with lush greenery give it an enchanting appeal that one can only dream of. Surprisingly, owning a manor doesn't come cheap, with an average starting price of around $2 million. However, rumors circulate that Pearson's remarkable Wiltshire Manor commanded a staggering price of over $31 million, despite the challenging market conditions. It seems there was a fierce bidding war, with several potential buyers vying for this extraordinary property. But Pearson's determination prevailed as he acquired his dream home, a sprawling Edwardian-style manor with ample space to spare. Situated on a vast 8,500-acre estate, the manor boasts picturesque gardens and charming footpaths, inviting leisurely strolls through the idyllic English countryside. Located on the outskirts of Ramsbury, the manor's location holds significant importance for the Swedish billionaire. While he may not have extravagant public hobbies, there is one passion that captivates him, beer. That passion led him to acquire the Ramsbury Brewing Company and Distillery, an endeavor that sets him apart. While some settle for homebrew kits in their garages, Pearson's billions allow him to indulge in owning an entire brewing company. But his love for the English countryside doesn't end there. In a move that surprises many, he purchased an entire village, Lincoln Holt Village, for a staggering $33.8 million in 2009. Valuing the worth of a used English village may seem puzzling, but this one is truly extraordinary. Complete with charming pubs, 1,500 acres of farmland, 425 acres of woodlands, and a picturesque downtown area, Lincoln Holt Village epitomizes the idyllic English countryside. Who knew that one could purchase an entire village, let alone one that commands tens of millions of dollars? While some billionaires opt for flashy Ferraris, Pearson chooses the tranquil village life, basking in the serenity and beauty that only an English village can provide. Within their story, there lies tragedy, mystery, deep-rooted family conflicts, and unimaginable wealth. Yet, amidst the shadows that haunt this seemingly cursed family, rays of hope and fleeting moments of happiness emerge. Hans Rousing, with a fortune of approximately $12 billion, stands as one of the family's most controversial figures. Despite his tumultuous past, he found solace and love in the arms of his second wife, the esteemed art expert, Julia Browden. 
After the reunion, Hans and Julia bid farewell to the haunting memories of the Belgravia mansion, where he tragically lost his first wife. They embarked on a new chapter settling in a lavish mansion in Chelsea that commanded a staggering price of around $38.4 million. However, this move was more than a mere change of scenery. Hans had grand plans to transform his newfound haven into an exquisite paradise. Extensive remodeling plans were set in motion, encompassing the creation of meticulously landscaped gardens, luxurious servant quarters, and an additional entrance to enhance the estate's grandeur. The highlight of these renovations was a majestic basement development worth a staggering $13.5 million. Hans sought to uproot and replant every aspect of the estate, reimagining its interior to reflect his evolving desires. Not every billionaire's story culminates in happiness and fulfillment. Let me take you on a journey through the rise and fall of Marcus Pearson, a tale that reminds us of the fleeting nature of success. Unrelated to Stefan Pearson, despite sharing a common surname, a name as ubiquitous as the Swedish landscape itself, Marcus Pearson once seemed destined to conquer the world. He single-handedly crafted a game that elicited envy from all other game designers, an iconic masterpiece known as Minecraft. In case you weren't aware, this seemingly simple yet mesmerizing pixelated crafting game holds the title of the most successful game in history. With a staggering 238 million sales and billions of dollars in revenue, Minecraft catapulted Pearson's wealth to a lofty $1.9 billion. Perhaps the most notable was his acquisition of a lavish bachelor pad in Beverly Hills, California, a residence that he outbid renowned figures like Jay-Z and Beyonce for in a display of his financial prowess. Valued at a whopping $70 million, this opulent abode boasts eight luxurious bedrooms and 15 bathrooms, each toilet carrying a price tag of $5,600. But that's just the beginning. The purchase came as a turnkey mansion, where Marcus inherited the extensive artwork, exquisite furniture, and an impressive wine collection, including several boxes of Dom Perignon a coveted champagne that can fetch up to $700 per bottle. This haven is a haven for nerds, filled with alluring amenities such as retractable glass walls, an inviting infinity pool, a state-of-the-art home gym, and a half a million dollar sofa created by Bentley Motors. It truly embodies the epitome of luxury. As if that weren't enough, the mansion even boasts a candy bar stocked with $200,000 worth of sugary delights. It was meticulously designed to house supercars, featuring a turntable display and human-sized transformers overlooking the awe-inspiring collection. Unfortunately, Marcus's downfall began as he descended into a pattern of tweeting offensive and reprehensible remarks, transforming him from one of gaming's greatest heroes to one of its most controversial figures. The consequences of his behavior were severe, as he found himself excluded from the game's own 10th anniversary celebration an event that should have celebrated his remarkable achievement. It begs the question, with all the wealth at his disposal, couldn't he have employed someone to remind him to exercise caution before sharing his thoughts with the world? In the exhilarating world of Formula One racing, where danger lurks at every turn and skill reigns supreme, the sport commands staggering annual budgets like the colossal $220 million of powerhouses like Mercedes or Ferrari. However, in 2016, a glimmer of hope emerged for the struggling Swedish team, Sauber. As a group of passionate Swedish billionaires came to their rescue, at first their identities remained shrouded in secrecy, but it was eventually revealed that among the buyers were members of two influential Swedish families. One of them was Carl Johan Persson, the son of Sweden's wealthiest man, Stefan Persson who had amassed a personal fortune of $1.6 billion as the CEO of H&M. The other was Finn Rousing, belonged to the renowned Rousing family, with a staggering wealth exceeding $8 billion. With such remarkable financial backing, the acquisition of the Sauber team held great promise. Could this be a classic underdog sports story where triumph emerges against all odds? However, the reality proved to be far from the tale of victory. The season that followed witnessed a lackluster performance from the team, culminating in a disappointing ninth place finish in the Brazilian Grand Prix. It was undeniably one of the worst seasons Sauber had ever encountered. The investment, it seemed, did not yield the desired outcome. 
It serves as a reminder that in the realm of sports dreams, sometimes the script doesn't unfold as we hope. In this case, the Swedish billionaires found themselves on the opposite side of the podium, where success eluded their grasp. Yet, it is through such challenges that the true spirit of sportsmanship and perseverance is forged, reminding us that in the pursuit of dreams, the journey matters just as much as the destination. Passion knows no bounds when it comes to Daniel Ek, the renowned co-founder of Spotify and an ardent football enthusiast. His heart beats fiercely for his beloved team, Arsenal, to the extent that his love for the sport transcends financial boundaries. With a fortune amassed through Spotify amounting to a staggering $3.9 billion, Eck decided to make a daring move, a juicy offer to acquire Arsenal. This offer, worth $2.4 billion, represented a significant portion of his hard-earned wealth. It showcased a level of devotion and dedication that few sports fans could fathom. When his initial offer was rejected, Eck refused to surrender. His unwavering determination propelled him to make a daring counteroffer of $2.7 billion. This extraordinary display of devotion left many in awe, as it showcased the lengths to which a true fan is willing to go for the love of their team. Count Gustav Douglas stands tall as one of Sweden's wealthiest individuals, with a staggering fortune of $21.7 billion. Residing in a magnificent castle that traces its origins back to 1548, he epitomizes the opulent lifestyle that accompanies his noble status. However, behind this facade of grandeur lies an unexpected and captivating secret, a passion for the most seemingly mundane of hobbies. Count Gustav Douglas, with all his riches and influence, has devoted himself to the art of stamp collecting, an endeavor that has elevated him to the status of a world-class collector. In May of 2013, the Count made headlines when he acquired the coveted 1855 Treskilling yellow stamp. This small piece of paper, seemingly insignificant to the untrained eye, holds immense value in the realm of philately. And where does this remarkable stamp find its place? At an astonishing price of not two or even 300, but a staggering 3.1 million dollars. Frederick Paulson Jr. isn't your average billionaire. He embodies the spirit of an adventurer, a modern-day Indiana Jones. With his extraordinary wealth of $8.2 billion, he embarks on thrilling expeditions that span the globe, from conquering towering peaks to exploring the depths of the unknown. For instance, Paulson accomplished a groundbreaking feat as the first person to cross from Alaska to Russia in an ultralight plane. Just piloting one of these aircrafts with all of its inherent risks is an adventure. But Paulson doesn't stop there. He sets his sights on scaling Ecuador's Mount Chimborazo, the highest point on Earth. The endeavor comes with a hefty price tag, with guides charging up to $650 per person and necessary supplies costing around $30,000 for the best gear. In August of 2007, Paulson's quest for exploration led him to the depths of the true North Pole. Plunging 14,000 feet into the abyss, he embarked on an extraordinary journey in a $2 million submersible, delving into a seabed unseen by human eyes. The cost of the submersibles alone was substantial, and the entire expedition amounted to an additional $2 million. As we conclude this awe-inspiring journey, we invite you to embark on even more captivating adventures. Join us on Superstructures, subscribe now, and be amazed by the extraordinary stories that will leave you in awe. Let's embark on this incredible journey together.